Colossians chapter 2, through the Bible, part 4. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Colossians 2 verse 13. Salvation is not the improvement of the old nature. It is the impartation of a new nature. Remember that Paul had to deal with two systems of Greek philosophy, which were very popular in his day. They were diametrically opposed to each other, but they both came out at the same end of the horn. One philosophy was Stoicism, and the other was Epicureanism. The Stoic taught that man was to live nobly, and that death could not matter. The idea was to hold the appetites in check and to become indifferent to changing conditions. In effect, they said, be not uplifted by good fortune nor cast down by adversity. They believe that man is more than circumstances and that the soul is greater than the universe. It was a brave philosophy, you see. But the problem was how to live it. It was like the people who say that they are living by the Sermon on the Mount when actually they are many miles from it. The Epicurean taught that all is uncertain. We know not whence we came. We know not whither we go. We only know that after a brief life we disappear from this scene, and it is vain to deny ourselves any present joy in view of the possible future ill. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. The interesting thing to observe is that both these systems attempted to deal with the flesh, that is, the old nature that you and I have, not the meat on our bones. The old nature works through our old habits, old desires, old testings and temptations. How are we going to bring that under control? There are all kinds of gimmicks and systems that are set before us today to enable us to live the Christian life. I know people who have been to Bible conferences where the Christian life is taught, and at home they have a drawer filled with notebooks. But they are not doing so well in living the Christian life. Why not? Because we need to recognize this one important thing that Paul is saying here. We are joined to the living Christ. Now, if you are joined to him, my friend, you are going to live as if you are. How close are you to him? Do you walk with him? Do you turn to him in all the emergencies of this life? Is he the one who is the very center of your life? 3. As Paul turns now to the error of legality, we will again find that the answer is to come to the word of God and through it, to come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. A glory gilds the sacred page. Majestic like the sun. It sheds a light on every age. It gives but borrows none. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Colossians 2 verse 14 Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, this old flesh of ours has been condemned. When Christ died, he died for you and me. He paid the penalty for our sin. When the Lord Jesus died, Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. This is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. John 19 verse 19. He was being publicly executed on the grounds that he had led in a rebellion. This was, of course, not true, but that was the charge against him. When the people standing there read that sign, they understood that he had been disloyal to Caesar and that he had made himself to be a king. To them that was the reason he was dying on a cross. But when God looked upon that cross, he saw an altar on which the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world was offered. God saw another inscription there, high above the inscription that man had written. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. What did God write on that cross? He wrote the ordinances, 
He wrote the Ten Commandments. He wrote a law which I cannot keep, ordinances which I am guilty of breaking. When Christ died there, he did not die because he broke them. He was sinless. But it was because I broke them, because I am a sinner, and because you are. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 23 Therefore, my friend, if God has saved you and raised you from the dead and joined you to a living Christ, why should you go back to a law that you couldn't keep in the first place? You can't even keep the law today in your own power and in your own strength. You see, the law was given to discipline the old nature. But now the believer is given a new nature, and the law has been removed as a way of life. Let me give you an illustration. A man once came to me and said, I'll give you $100 if you will show me where the Sabbath day has been changed. I answered, I don't think it has been changed. Saturday is Saturday, it is the seventh day of the week, and it is the Sabbath day. I realize our calendar has been adjusted and can be off a few days, but we won't even consider that point. The seventh day is still Saturday and is still the Sabbath day. He got a gleam in his eye and said, Then why don't you keep the Sabbath day if it hasn't been changed? I answered, The day hasn't changed, but I have been changed. I've been given a new creation. We celebrate the first day because that is the day he rose from the grave. That is what it means when he says that the ordinances which were against us have been nailed to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Colossians 2 verse 15 The spiritual victory that Christ won for the believer is of inestimable value.